that if you're planning on uh, entering the contest this year, you need to start thinking about that message and that speech right now. This is when you're working on that incredible gift that you give to the world. And so I thought, wouldn't it be wonderful if we can get together October, November, and have an incredible session? And then it was following, isn't this right, Sarah? It was following the uh, conference, the International Toastmasters International Convention, where my good friend, Lindy McLean, was once again delivering a sensational message, which you will get to hear today, by the way. Um, Sarah said, oh my gosh, wouldn't it be great if Lindy could come to that session that you've been talking about having? And I said, well, first of all, I know she'd be honored. Secondly, I would love the opportunity to honor her because Lindy, to me, is like the queen of amazing contest speeches. She works so hard and she, as a coach too, and I've experienced that myself with her coaching gift to me, is uh, sensational. The way that she can help you, not only with the message part, but really authentically delivering that, not in a an acting sort of way, not in a fakey sort of way, but in a real way that connects with listeners, that connects with a world, worldwide audience. So whether or not you are here because you have an intention of competing, that may be you, or maybe you have an intention of giving a TED Talk, or maybe you just have a story locked inside you that you have been yearning to find a way to find the words and that magnetic message locked within it to give a gift to the world. So wherever you are, you are in the right place today to meet our amazing presenter for our workshop. It's my great pleasure to introduce Lindy. How are you feeling these days about speaking? Has speaking lost its shiny appeal? How about contests? Are you eager to compete or do you avoid them like the plague? Today's presenter says, being crystal clear about your speaking motivation is first. Then you can fully dive into that attractive universal thing called your magnetic message. Who better to present today's Mine Your Magnetic Message workshop than this year's Region 1 representative in the International Speech Contest semifinals? Yep, there's only one person I can think of. Please welcome to the screen our three-time International Speech Contest semifinalist and 2020 second runner-up, in the world champion of public speaking. Please welcome my good friend, sensational, distinguished Toastmaster, Lindy McLean. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Thank you so much. Hey, everybody. You know, most of us join Toastmasters to, to get better at speaking. And somewhere along the way, I see people begin to kind of peel off leaders and speakers. So would you put in the chat an L if you consider yourself more a leader and an S if you consider yourself more a speaker? Rebecca, let me know what you're seeing, will you? Yes, I am seeing a, wow, a blend of both and some people saying L and S. Yes, Wonderful. there's a lot of each, a lot of That's each. That's perfect. Because the fact that we think of them as separate is a total misconception. And I'm sure other contest competitors, Omar probably will tell you this as well. You know, I certainly set out on the contest journey dreaming of mastery. And that is a universal thing. But there are more things that I gained along the way. Next slide, please. You see, when you're speaking an authentic message that is personal, and reveals who you are 
and dives deep, there are other things that come forward too. I noticed after my first contest season, suddenly when I went to my officer's training, more people knew who I was. Oh, this was back when we were meeting in person, which hopefully some of you are again. Ah, so my visibility grew. When I placed third in the world, I was bombarded with friend requests, of course. So suddenly I became visible. And there was something more. The sense of community deepened. People who had never met me would come up to me and feel that they already knew me, they liked me, they trusted me. That's what's possible with the magnetic message that people come already feeling connected. That is a powerful thing because moving on to influence, when you're a project manager, isn't the thing you want most or a team leader? When you're recruiting your team members, don't you want most for them to say yes? Speaking has done that for me. When I call people or ask them, would you do this for me? More times than not, they say yes. And I believe that it is largely due to them experiencing the deeper self that I bring to my speeches. So whether or not you're interested in competing, please, please dive deep, share your personal stories because not only will you discover more about yourself, but all these other things that are so helpful with leadership, visibility, community, influence will also grow at the same time. Of those four, which one is your most, what's your strongest motivation for speaking? Go ahead and type that in chat, will you? Rebecca, let me know what you're seeing. Okay, be my authentic self, self-discovery, all influence community. Again, let's see, is there anything that somebody's not choosing? I don't see visibility. I don't think anybody has, oh, there's one person that's added visibility. Um, but lots of influence, community, and self-discovery. Perfect. Wonderful. Hopefully you've already had that experience. And my saying so is just underscoring your experience already. If you have not yet, it means you're holding back in your speeches. Perhaps you're doing speeches that are mostly educational and you aren't really revealing yourself. I encourage you to take a risk, jump forward, and start telling those personal stories. If you'd remove Rebecca's slide for a moment now, just have me. So what do you think of when you think of what is a magnetic message? What to you, when you hear something and for you it's magnetic, why is that? It, when did you last experience one? If there's a particular message that you've heard before that jumps to mind, type it in chat. Let me know what that is. For me, I think of the first time I'm going to butcher his name because I don't know how to, to say it right. Hedarache Denenjaya, I'm not sure. The wonderful contest champion who starts with a rose and ends with a rose and, and who, whose through line is I see something in you, but I don't know what it is. That resonated so truly with me. I'm a seeker. I've spent much of my life trying to figure out who am I? What am I here for? What am I doing? And that speech made me laugh, made me cry because I understand what it's like to think there's something in me, but I don't know what it is. Never mind everyone else. What for you jumps out at you as a magnetic message? Anybody oh. sharing things that we should? We're, we're seeing vulnerability, more of the sort of the, the larger feeling vulnerability when there's vulnerability, humor and insight, wisdom, sort of the gift to the audience is the, is what is being talked about. I Great. agree about the authentic personal stories. Yeah. Perfect. Anybody want to say out loud an experience with a, with a, with a magnetic message? Who to you has been magnetic and that's influenced you? Not right now. That's fine. If so, if so, if you'd like to share at any time when Lindy offers, just go ahead and raise your hand and we will find you and and then you can unmute. Perfect. Now, when you think about yourself giving 
a magnetic message? What are the obstacles? What makes it hard for you to come up with your magnetic message? Go ahead and type that in the chat. What are the obstacles? Why is it hard? Vulnerability, says Donna Combs. People may judge. Digging deep is hard. Can't think of anything. Vulnerability, having clarity, finding a way to include a message. Hard to share some personal info. Yes. It's hard for me to find the overarching theme, technique, fear of being judged once again. Um, hard to craft it well, says Ellen Liang. Okay, those are great. Perfect. Those are those are wonderful. And I'd say right on target. You know, as human beings, we are designed in an interesting way. It's really hard to see ourselves clearly. And that's where community is useful. And that is why the contest journey is so powerful, because it's through the feedback and the, the responses that we get from others that we begin to learn more about ourselves. It's, it's phenomenal. And it's also so helpful as you're trying. So what does that mean? That means that you need to be willing to dive in while the speech is still, excuse my language, crap. Every year I find that hard at the beginning of the contest season to dive in and just start where it is, knowing that it is not a good speech yet, because you have to start and you have to get that feedback. And then from there, it can begin to grow. From there, you will know where it is you're holding back, where you need to go deeper. People will tell you and you'll be able to feel some of it as well. So just start, just do it, the Nike uh, tagline is perfect in that case. Now, some people say that they are concerned that they don't have anything new to say. That, And I want to tell you that there is nothing new under the sun. There are, in fact, a limited number of universal themes, really, probably mm, 10 to 14, well, variations on each, but there's success and failure. There's uh, fe feeling like an outsider and belonging, there's uh, feeling rejected and being innovative, there's uh, confidence and not confidence, there's uh, what you're passionate about and, feel and feeling uh, crushed, there's feeling like you don't have a voice and finding it, there's wanting to express yourself, wanting to be uh, creative and uh, but feeling unable to. There's um, feeling there are power issues where you feel powerless and then gain your power. And there's uh, forgiveness. You you These are examples. I'm sorry, go ahead. Forgiveness. Forgiveness, absolutely. Love is big because wh why not? We're, we're in a world where that's more is needed. And most of us are actually designed in this way through my knowledge of of scientific hand analysis, most of us, like 80% of us are designed so that speaking our truth makes us healthier, honest, honestly. So it's something to do for other reasons besides just those reasons that I told you. So you are the unique part. You, your life, the particular blend that you bring to it is what makes it unique your experience, your voice, your manner, all that makes it yours instead of someone else's. So don't hold yourself back thinking, oh, I'll just be a knockoff of so-and-so. That's not true. You have your own particular brilliance and I can't wait to see what that is. Now, there is a question that changes everything. It changed everything for, for me. And where I heard, first heard this question was from your lovely Yelena Balabanova in District 2. What I'd like to do is to have a guided meditation. So I'm going to ask to go to gallery view. I'm going to, I don't need to see people. Well, I like gallery view for the moment. And I'm going to just ask you to close your eyes and I'm going to take you somewhere. So just close your eyes and take a minute to pay attention to your feet on the floor, your hips in the chair, kind of squiggle around so that you 
recognize, oh yes, I'm right here right now. Take a couple of deep breaths and inhale relaxation and exhale tension. And do that more than once. Now imagine from the root of your tailbone that there's a tail that goes into the center of the earth. And from the top of your head, a line that hooks into the sky. And feel yourself relaxed and balanced and present in this moment. Good. You're completely safe, completely well. Now I want you just to tune in to your life as it is right now. There's an area in your life that is more of a struggle than others. Now it might not be a huge dramatic struggle, or it might. It might just be a little hiccup, a little thing that you notice you have to pay more attention to, put more, more energy toward. So identify that in your mind. It might be in your relationship, in your work environment, it might be uh, in your personal development. It might be more than one of those things. But hone in on where that struggle or obstacle is appearing. Okay, and as you have it, just kind of breathe it in, feel it. Feel the way it makes you feel inside. All right, now here's that question that changes everything. In order to do better in this particular circumstance, what is the message that you need to hear right now? What is the message that you need to hear? Just let it come to you, it can be very simple. If you're feeling, oh my gosh, I'm, oh my gosh, I don't have something, just relax. Knowing what the area that you're struggling with is the start. Just take the closest thing you can think of. And go ahead and open your eyes and roll your neck and get back in this moment. Reach over and write down that message beside you or take note of it in whatever electronic way or something so that you take note of what that message is that you need to hear. Because most people approach, well, uh, okay, a common approach, I don't know about most people, contest with what do I have to offer of value? Now, the reason that it's so brilliant to ask, what do I need to hear? One of the things that's true about contest speeches is you have to give them over and over and over again, not just while you're competing, but while you're preparing. And as you do that, it can become flat and canned and blah, 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 blah. If you have tapped into the cord of something that is a true, has emotional resonance for you, then each time you deliver it, it's going to be far more alive and far more interesting to those people who are hearing it. And you will be able to do it again and again and have there be meaning around it. So that's the brilliance of it. All right, now we're going to give, I'm going to give you an assignment. And let me first say, and you will have five minutes to work on it. But let me first say that whatever you're struggling with now, I believe that in life we do this as we grow. We kind of spiral, hopefully up but that we come around to the same issues repeatedly, whether that's failure and whether whatever it is, there's, there's likely a pattern. 
So sometimes with what you're struggling with right now, you may not want to share that story. It's too private. It's too vulnerable. It's just, you just are not, or maybe it just isn't resolved enough to be able to be a good story yet. So do this. Look back from where you are in your life and find another instance, another struggle that has the same that's the same theme that that's what I want the same sort of theme okay there's probably more than one so just pick one all right now here's the assignment and I want you to know we're just doing the thing in whatever shape it comes out there's no right or wrong about this okay you are going to create right now a three to five minute speech using the wisdom that you need and the story from the past. You're going to use the same opening and closing line. That opening and closing line is, if I only knew then what I know now, followed by your wisdom. If I only knew then what I know now, blank. And you'll say that for your first line and your last line. And in between, you'll tell that past story where you could have used that wisdom. Now, I'm hoping that that is clear. And I want to give you five minutes to work on that. Oh, wait, I'm going to give it first before that. I'm going to give you an example. Checking my notes. Rebecca says, give an example. If only I knew then what I know now. The only permission you need is your own. It's Christmas time. I'm a few years out of college and I'm home visiting my parents. I'm sitting at night alone in the living room. The lights are twinkling on the tree and tears are pouring down my face. I'm reading a book, Women Who Love Too Much. I realize that the relationship I'm in has to go. It's a mess. I'm coming apart at the seams. Now, how did I get together with this guy? Oh, he's a brilliant performer, musician, singer, charismatic on stage. I didn't give myself permission to embrace my dream. I gave myself permission to date it. <laughs> if only I knew then what I know now, the only permission you need is your own. That's an example. Okay, now you have five minutes, ladies and gentlemen, to prepare. So it's 9.56, you have until Looks like we have somebody unmuted. Could everybody please check their audio settings and mute themselves? Thank you.
And that's our five minutes. Next, we're going to go into breakout rooms. So you have in pairs, so you have a chance to share this with someone else. There's going to be 12 minutes, a minute to get in. And then at the five and a half minute point, we're going to send a broadcast switch message in so that you make sure and both take a turn. Now, I'm aware that making breakout rooms in big meetings can have all kinds of things happen. If you get to the breakout room and you're the only person there, don't sit there the whole time. Come back out. So give it a minute in case it's just taking someone time to join. And if you're the only one in there, please come back out. We'll figure something else out. If you cannot turn on your camera, uh, maybe let Sarah know. But this is the time to turn on your camera because that's the only way this is really going to be very meaningful is to share yourself visually as well as audibly if you yeah so we're going to go ahead and do that any any are we clear clear as mud perfect then let's go ahead and do that so madam zoom master will you send people to breakout rooms oh okay okay <clears throat> um maybe what we can do um with is it margareta margareta yeah. yes um margareta what would you feel comfortable just sharing what you're working on with Lindy right here with all of us? Sure. Okay. How, how's that sound, you guys? How does that sound? Okay. So, okay. If only I knew then what I know now, I would have chosen my words more carefully. Mm -hmm. After a call from my son, a dear or a dear one, I... I didn't know what to say. I was at a loss for words. What could I say? How could I respond? Now, after some silence, I opted for a story that sounded stilted, even controlling and judgmental. Mm. I repeated what I heard another person say in a similar situation. Not really being in touch with my own heart. This resulted in a rift in our relationship that took a very long time to heal. Because heartache, misunderstandings, and division. Had I been in touch with my heart, gone deeper, it would have spared us much heartache. So if I only knew then what I know now, I would have chosen my words very carefully and listened to my heart. Okay, that's my story. I didn't time it. That's Thank a great you. start. Wow. Thank you for that gift, Margareta. Full of emotion. And Alex is here too. That was beautiful, Margareta. That was beautiful. Wow. Very emotional. Um, Were you surprised Alex at what came out? Maybe not, because I heard it so much in my community. So I was repeating that part instead of relating from my heart. Mm -hmm. I heard actually somebody say, you can ask for a um, repeat or a makeover, takeover, which means you ask the person to go back to that call and talk and you respond differently and it actually helps so oh, wow. yeah alex have you gotten had a chance to go yet he just joined so i don't think oh, he, he did joined. the exercise okay. Oh, oh okay i was listening on other person's cell so i actually know it's the oh you uh, did read what i knew now yeah yeah okay lindy well, we're at if you want to join because all the rooms have people assigned so if alex you do you want to hear? begin your speech to us yeah. right now just so go ahead and share that we have another four minutes he'll need the um assignment you don't know what the assignment is, is that right if i only knew then what okay. i knew yeah i may as well why not i can yeah, entertain you all for a few minutes before we close breakout rooms <laughs> if i only knew then what i knew now my wants were just as important as theirs one day, 
I had a friend who was struggling. He had been moving to a new city and he had nobody there for well over a year that he could talk to. And despite hanging out with him online every single week and telling him all of the ways that he could find community, that he could find people to hang out with, it just wasn't working. So one day, a group of friends decided to pull the trigger and we're all gonna fly out there and hang out with him for a week. So I take time off of work. I go and I plan all of this stuff that we wanted to do in the city. And we go, we fly. We get there and everything goes south. I didn't want to be there. I didn't want to hang out with him. He was just being rude. And I was there just to support my friend. But I didn't want to be there anymore. I knew that he needed it. I knew that I'd go through with it. But I didn't want to be there. He had a great time. We went to did a whole bunch of events in the city. We made sure that we got him food. We had, had uh, hung out with a bunch of friends. And we, we just enjoyed our time together. But if I only knew then what I knew now, that my wants were just as important as his, I might have made a different choice. Mm. That's wisdom for you. <laughs> Very good. Deep truth. Really nice. Really what nice. would you what would you have done differently? Uh I probably would have flown back after the first day of the week, actually. Mm. Yeah. I would not have changed anything about helping a friend in need. I would have done that in a heartbeat, but I wouldn't have stayed and endured the relatively terrible time of that experience but i would have definitely gone to help him so if i had only known then what i knew now yeah 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 <laughs> that is a great thing to learn isn't it oh yes <laughs> i'm glad i learned it young right yeah right right <laughs> yes. Otherwise, it be well. <laughs> there are many people that will never learn that so That's it's true. a great message to share Yes. Are you still are you still learning it, or is it something that you consider yourself still learning it, but aware of it? It's a process. Oh, it's always a process, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful, Marg you. Margareta. In that speech that you gave, are you going to share those words that you said that were, um? I mean, are you planning to share that sentence that you regret as part of that speech? Uh, not quite yet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not quite, not ready yet for that. <laughs> it's an experience that I can relate to. I know a lot, I mean, mo most humans on the planet can relate to in terms of saying something hurtful that then damages a relationship and you want to do over and and all of that and uh it's it's going to be powerful i mean that is a universal reg regret is universal yeah yeah so thank you for this because i can make a speech at a club with this actually absolutely and i <laughs> or an international to speech <laughs> to encourage you that the arc of a of a well-written speech you bring people up and then boom you drop them down and you bring them back up yeah and so that dropping down moment is really important and how you get there is by revealing the most difficult thing and the mm -hmm. most the, the feelings that are most difficult and so what please frame what you're afraid to do as generosity because that is what it really is it's that generosity of sharing your own deep experience is what draws people to you. So thank you for that. Thank you. Everybody's coming back. Welcome back, everyone. <laughs> All right now I get to ask you what you learned and what were your takeaways and insights. You can go ahead and leave it on gallery view for the moment. And before we do that, I, I, I do want to just say one thing that's, that's interesting and, and so true is that universality is achieved through specificity. In other words, the way that you get to universal themes is by being very specific 
and very honest about a specific situation. And then boom, everyone feels it across across the boundaries and so forth. All right, your time. What did you learn? What was your takeaway? If you want us to talk out loud, please raise your virtual hand so we can get you and hear from you. If you don't want to, type in chat is fine. Ellen, what was your experience? I was in the room with Elizabeth Harris. She is wonderful. She has taught me that this particular technique draw out our wisdom immediately. Really, thank you, Lindsay. Appreciate that. And did you have your own wisdom drawn out as well? You did? Yeah. Perfect. Wonderful. Okay. Who else had an experience that you'd like to share? We have one comment in the chat from Michelle Wilkinson. Starting with crap, I love this. Starting with crap can lead to improvement even in five minutes, just as you said, Lindy. Awesome. It takes courage to start with crap. And I want to acknowledge that. Linda, I've got I see your hand. And basically I have the same comment. It does take courage to start with crap. When I started with mine, I thought this is just not a great speech. But I did your um, opening and closing line anyway, I did my story, and it didn't feel so bad. It, it taught me there is much to, to develop there as well, Am I, if I'm willing to, to have that vulnerability. Well done. Well done. There were two people who ended up sharing to us because we couldn't quite get the rooms. And I just thought those are gorgeous, beautiful things. And it isn't because they were polished. It's because they were honest and they were meaningful and they were true. So those things take you in the direction of a brilliant speech. So once you're going in that direction, you're already more than on the right track. Um, Roxanne, Go ahead. Roxanne Spring says, I loved having a new theme for an old story. Asha Singh says the speech came through with very specific, a very specific focus point. I liked how Suzanne weaved a very different story in a beautiful way. Nice, nice. And Ellen, you had your hand up. Did you still want to say something? No, no. She, she spoke. Yeah. Okay. That looks like it's it, Lindy. And Veronique's, I see a few couple more comments. Uh, oh, okay. Suzanne, yes, Veronique. I realized that the crap is just a starting point to make a glorious compost. That's awesome. Okay, put that on a poster, please. Started with one focus and realized it was actually a deeper truth. Oh, man, that happens a lot, doesn't it, Lindy? Kyle McElroy, make. Ella Goy was truly empathetic and really understood my story. That's from Norman Oring. Mm. Very nice. Very nice. Now we are actually a little ahead of schedule. So I'm going to throw in an, an invitation that we oh. hadn't planned for, which is for does one of you want to share with the whole group and let us hear your story. And we do have one more hand up. Um, okay. Paula, Paula Wiseman. Go ahead, Paula. <laughs> Thank you. I I just wanted to say that uh, that 10 minutes was immensely, um, it, it really had a lot of connectivity. I, I was paired with ME, and we just, from completely different parts of the country in our childhood, we just uh, really got a, a, a place of connection. So I wanted to say that. That's and the vulnerability. yeah in that moment it, right away you're talking remember what i opened with what the benefits of of speaking and sharing this kind of story you had that you you're strangers and right away now you feel connected just like that over the space of minutes and that has to do with sharing those personal stories perfect we're at 40 lindy just to fyi thank you yes and we do have about five minutes before my uh scheduled break so does someone want to share to the group? If not, we will go on break anyway, right early. But if, if someone wants to step forward and and share, we'd love to hear it. I see a volunteer, Betty. Betty, Betty yes. got her hand up first. Yes. 
Can you, I'm you very surprised. Betty? Excuse me? I just spotlight Betty, if you would, please, Sarah. Oh, thank you. I am very pleased with this minutes we spent. I met with Lisa and she helped me find parts of myself that maybe I haven't owned yet. And I'm very grateful to having had this conversation with her. And I was even crying a little because she's very deep and very, um, I felt connected. So I was telling my story of having been born as what people call a gifted child, but not having felt as like a gift. And I help parents. I help parents to deal with parenting issues. And then she suggested if I help parents of gifted ch children. And I had never thought of that. And so, well, maybe that's something that I am missing and I can touch on and be of great help for others and also help me own parts of my own story that maybe are still asking for attention. I really appreciate those moments. Thank you for putting this together. And thank you, Lisa, for helping me touch some, some parts that I haven't thought of. That's Thank beautiful, you. Betty. If you are willing to share, what is the line of wisdom that you need to hear? Had I known what I know now, I would have, what I shared with her was in general about speaking to parents, because I've been helping parents for, for a while now. But had I known what I know now, I could have started speaking more openly to parents and sharing the wisdom I've had gathered to deal with parenting difficulties. So one before, way to say that as what I would call a foundational phrase might be, I have wisdom that matters, or I have wisdom to share, or I have wisdom to make other people's lives better. But that's yes. a discovery, isn't it? It's about your own value and how that can connect in the world. The, a foundational phrase is a phrase that's 10 words or less, and it's that thing that you want to walk away from a speech remembering. A foundational phrase should happen early in a speech, in the middle if it can, and definitely have it be the last thing that you say. Because I can't, can't tell you how many times I've heard brilliant speeches and then turned to the person next to me and said, what was that about again? You know, our minds are like, not like this, right? Yeah, so, when you said I have wisdom, you mean to say that phrase mm -hmm. exactly or... or it, imply it in different way no no i mean to say it if only i knew then what i know now my wisdom matters or i have oh i see what you mean share. yes i would have begun earlier right and then at the end again what what your what your, what it is is it need, it's a call to action that you want your audience to take away for themselves so you want them to walk away going my wisdom matters or whatever the specific words that resonate most with you so that's that's what that's kind of a next possible step. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Well, I think let's go ahead and take that five minute break now. So it's ten twenty three. You have until ten twenty eight to go ahead and take care of take care of business <laughs> and be back here. We'll see you again shortly. Okay. Fantastic. Here we are. Welcome back. Hasn't this been a sensational? workshop so far. If you agree with me, put a why into the chat. Let's light up the chat with whys. And thank you, Lindy, for bringing us this sensational ability, a time that we can work and hone. You know, if that is the hardest thing just to get started. I wanted to tap back to something Lindy said right before the break. In 2019, I went to Denver to the International Convention, and as you know, the International Speech Contest finals and semifinals takes place at the convention. So this was the last time it was fully in person. 
And as I sat there watching one amazing international speech after another, there were seven or eight of them, I took a picture as all of them stood on the stage just before the voting came in, just before the awards were handed out for first, second, and third. So I took this picture, they're all fabulous. And then right after the session broke up, I went down to the bar where a lot of people were hanging out. And I showed that picture to about 12 people. I said, okay, you've just seen, you've just seen in the last hour, each of these people speak. Now tell me, which messages do you remember from, from each of these people? And by and large, after hearing, it, it's fresh in your mind, right? Every One speech after another, the average person could only remember two, maybe three of the messages that actually stuck. And so that foundational phrase element that Lindy pointed out, that's the, that is the power of that phrase to that like Dan and Jay, Jan and Dan and Jaya, easy for me to say, phrase of I see you, which we still remember all these years later. And if you haven't seen that speech, go on YouTube. And Lindy, what was that? 2018? I'm not sure, but all you have to do is world championship. I see you, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> and it'll yes, come yes, I see, yes, I see something in you, but I don't know what it is. Yeah. And, and it has all the elements of what Lindy was talking about. All right. And here we go, Lindy. Uh, please welcome back, Lindy McLean. Welcome back, everybody. I just want to quickly review what we've done so far. So we talked about your speaking motivation. Why is it important? And maybe you have something new to lean into from that. We talked about magnetic message, what it's like to experience one. And then we dove in and I asked you, what message do you need to hear as the basis for your next magnetic message? Later, after this section, there'll be one more break. And then in the last section, we will have time to workshop a few of you. Take that speech that you created and share it with the group. And we'll interact a little about that. So if you've got that itch, let it sit there and think, oh, yes, I think I do have the courage. And we'll have the chance to do that just a little later. But first, we're going to spend this section talking about the specifics of what it takes to create a winning contest speech. And right now, Sarah is dropping the International Speech Contest judging form in the chat. How many of you have been served as a judge for a speech contest? Put a Y in the chat if you have. And Rebecca, let me know what you're seeing. A lot of Ys? Uh, yes, and we're sort of mixed in with the Ys from before, but let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We probably have 15 and I make 16. <laughs> Good start. I judged for the first time after I lost my first year. I competed within like a month or two of joining. And then um, I lost at area right away. And Kyle suggested that I be a judge at, I think it was division or, or area division. I believe it was. And just the act of doing that taught me so much. I have not been a judge frequently because I've been busy being a contestant, but just knowing in your mind, even if it's for me, it's not even a conscious thing because I don't pay a lot of attention to what's on there in the way some, some, some people might, but I've had that visceral experience of having to uh, weigh speeches and figure out what worked and what did not work for me as the, the viewer. So those of you who have been a judge, put in the chat how difficult that was on a scale of one to five, one being uh, easy peasy and five being very difficult. Rebecca, let me know what- Five, you know. four, 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 lots of fours and fives. There's only one, wow, Emmy says two. That's amazing. And a oh. few couple of threes. Okay. Um, so nothing, no ones in there, I can tell you that. Okay. Threes and above seem to seem to be it. All right. Yes. And the higher you are a judge for, uh, higher when I say, okay, right. Can you imagine being a judge for the finals? <laughs> Maybe you can. 
But here's why I think it's difficult. Because you are forced to compare people against each other. And what are we all but unique, right? Yet that's what the process of judging is, is we're forced to do that comparison and that critical process. Now, I want to talk about that, the creative versus the critical process. I'm also a writer, and before I became a writer, I spent a lot of time reading books about writing and think, thinking of being a writer. And one by Brenda Euland, I think it's If You Want to Write or something like that. And I remember in there her illustration of, of the creative mind versus the critical mind and how on your first draft that you need to divorce yourself completely from the critical mind and just allow yourself to be creative because it is so easy for that critical mind to squash the creative, to, uh, you know, if you've ever given a speech and then had someone poorly give you feedback, you may have experienced that emotional squashing that can happen. And you don't want to do that to yourself. That's the worst place to have it happen. You can learn to let other people's feedback roll off of you, but it's harder to learn not to squash yourself. So today, Although I've provided you and we're going to be talking about some of those different sections on the judging form, I want you to use that information to feed your creative self, not your critical self. Looking at the different sections, how can I use them to bring my speech to life in a creative way? So that's my encouragement to you. All right. Let's move to the next slide. So as you see on that ballot, now before I talk about the ballot, okay, because not everyone here maybe wants to compete, but you do have a magnetic message, whether you are want to be a speech contestant or not. Although there's nothing like the speech contest process to put you into a form that helps you to actually do the work that you might not do if you aren't in there. So that's part of the beauty of the contest. But that um, magnetic message has these elements, whether or not it's a contest speech, okay? So up to 50 points goes to content, and that's speech development, effectiveness, speech value. Up to 30 points toward delivery, which is the use of your physical self, your voice, and your manner. And up to 20 points on language, which is the appropriateness and the correctness. So now let's look at, oh, then, yeah, next slide, please. But taking a step back from that very literal form, when I'm listening to a speech, there are three things that I want as a listener. I want to be taken on an emotional journey. So that's a question as I watch. Have they moved me? Did they make me laugh, cry? You know, what did, did they make me feel? Two. Have I experienced through the main character a shift? Like, did I, you know, main characters in books or movies or speeches are there for you to enter into, and they're they're your they're the eyes into the the experience. So that main character needs to have a transformation so that we as an audience can have that same transformation. So I look for that. And then, of course, there's that part that Rebecca referred to at the end. When I walk away, do I remember the message? That has to do a lot with clarity of the foundational phrase so that you get it short and sweet and repeating it, finding ways to say it at least three times in your speech. Because our brains, although very clever, don't remember very much for very long. Now, thinking about what you know as a Toastmaster about delivering speeches and creating speeches, there are many techniques that contribute to the clarity of storytelling and the impact of the emotional journey. So we're just going to link some of those techniques to the judging form. And there are probably many more that I, I have missed. But there's the strong opening. Now, this is really key. Having a strong opening in those first few seconds, people decide whether they're interested in listening to you or not. I think about my experience as a writer, when you submit your Okay, you're not allowed to submit your whole manuscript. You're allowed to submit five pages. You can count on them reading the first paragraph. Honestly, they'll put it down that fast. 
So your opening is critical to grabbing people's attention. The same with the close. The close determines whether or not they're going to remember what you've said. Characterization and dialogue. That is the business of instead of telling all about the story, I went to see my grandpa and he told me that if I would only do this, blah, 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 blah. That's called narration versus character. Grandpa, can I do X, Y, or Z? Let's see. That takes this many words and brings it down to this many words, which is, of course, part of the challenge of our five to seven minute form. Finding a way to get in what you need to, it takes streamlining the language for sure. This is something I learned from Darren LaCroix, and I'm sure he learned it from someone else as well. And I'm really quite rigorous about it for myself. I think it makes a huge difference for me. And that is to use present tense as you're telling the story, even when it's a past event. I mean, you frame it as a past. I'm nine years old. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm feeling this. I'm seeing that. I'm listening. I'm hearing this. Put yourself right in the situation. Then you can move and be a different age, different time. And that's part of the what's helpful about staging. We'll get to that part later. Present tense allows you as a speaker to relive it instead of just retelling it. Why is that important? Because in terms of an emotional journey, the audience will go on it if you go on it. Yes, your words can take them there, but even more if you are reliving it and feeling the depth of the struggle or the the joy of the moment, whatever. If you're feeling it, you can count on the fact that your audience is going to get it. So re using present tense helps me to relive it. I encourage you to try that if you haven't done that yet. Using a foundational phrase, I learned that from Craig Valentine, and he probably learned it from someone else. That's what he calls it. Repeating it drives the message home. You want to make sure and use that. Ten words or less, you know, three words is far better than nine. And then learning the skill of rewriting, because as they say, great speeches are not written, they are rewritten. You have, you're going to take whatever you wrote today and rewrite it so that the story is crystal clear, that it's vivid, that you use senses and word pictures to bring it to life. And you find ways to strip away the unnecessary words so that people are just going through images and emotions and they're going on this clean, clear journey. That's part of, that's what rewriting can do for you. And of course, clear speech organization. This week, I was at a meeting where I heard someone give a speech that has a lot of potential in it. And there were like two different themes and they were warring at each other. And, and people, more than one person said they weren't confused or lost or that's a business of organization, getting clear on, on things and organizing it in, in a clear way. So those are some of the, two, the tools that are involved under that content category in the judging form. So next slide. Now, then there's the delivery. Now, this is quite basic. It's the body language project, right? Now, how many times have you watched someone do a body language project and they're sitting at their desk? Hello? That is not body language. All right, just right now, a word to you all. When you speak, get your setup set up so you can stand because body means your whole body. You have experiences and feelings that live in your body. And the best way to access those is to be on your feet and draw from your whole body. So it's partly for you as a speaker as well as for the audience and what they take away. There's your posture. You know, you, you may be a character and have a different posture. You may be a different character and have a different posture. So posture is part of bringing characters to life as far as well as communicating moods. Then there's gestures. 
you know, because you're busy giving evaluations just like I am, that most of us have something that we tend to repeat. Have you watched a speaker go like this? They give their speech and it's the same thing. They do it, do it in a nice rhythm and it makes sense, but it's the same thing repeated, right? So that's one, one of the things that you learn that's important to learn to drop your hands to your side and only use a gesture when it has meaning. Okay. Vocal variety. Your voice is such an instrument for emotional journey, for characterization, for bringing a speech to life. And there are parts of different parts. There's the volume, there's the pitch, there's a the tone volume loud or soft pitch high or low tone uh i would say like warm or strident or you know different different tones like that qualities and then pauses is part of the vocal variety are you using pauses effectively to make humor stand out to make messages stand out to make emotion stand out use of the stage many people forget on zoom that we still have a stage and that it works just like a live stage in terms of visually tracking. Your stage right is on the audience's left. That's the past in our mind. It's like reading. We go from left to right. The past, moving forward in time, moving forward in time. So often there's like three different parts of our speeches. And one might be the past, the present, and the future. And you always kind of want to end front and center. But you can use the stage in ways that help to uh, spotlight different things, different characters, different moments. And that's the, the importance of using the stage, not just because it's on the ballot. Use of props. Props can be very helpful, but they need to be strategic and they need to have meaning. I have seen numbers of speeches that have lots of lovely props, but and they are representative of what's being talked about, but they don't necessarily have. The best use of props is when it's a metaphor for something else. Like I saw a Solar Sar, his last name just went out of my head. He gives a workshop about using props and he has a puppet that's a boxing puppet and it's a nun and she boxes. And it's all about how, okay, <laughs> I'm sure he went to Catholic school, the process of what someone does to you with, with okay, I'm not explaining it well, but, <laughs> but it had a deeper meaning that resonated across the speech and not just because it, it brought the moment to life, if that makes some sense. Okay, next slide. Language is fairly straightforward. Rebecca, can we have the next slide? Oh, yes. Thanks. There's whether we can understand a person, which is of course critical. And one thing to remember that doesn't come automatically. We are so lucky to have that speech contest be in the language that's our first language. We who, who, who learned it as a first language, meant some of you, it's not your first language. But remember, there's always the different shoe. It's just as important for you to speak slowly and clearly as it is for someone for whom English is not the first language because you have vocal particularities and we're used to just talking along about this fast and blah, 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 blah. And it's too fast for our listening ear. So it's important whether or not English is your first language, enunciation and pronunciation, the pace. Again, I will repeat, if you've ever listened to audiobooks, you will have noticed that the listening rate is slower than the reading rate. When people read aloud, you could read that sentence much faster with your eyes and take it into your brain, but your ear needs more time. Your audience needs more time to take in what you're saying than you may automatically be giving them. There's grammar which I'm not very good at, 
except that I read a lot. So I just imagine, is that right from a book? And then the use of acronyms or colloquialisms, anything that makes your speech less accessible, less universal is something to take out to find a substitute for. I remember the interview of Verity Price after she won with her message about writing a new story. And there was a part where she told about it. They're having to sell their home and move into a camper trailer. A camper trailer, that's what it was. And she talk, talked about practicing the speech and how there's a different word in Australia in Australia that they use commonly for it, but that when she brought it to an American audience, they didn't know what she was talking about. So those are the kinds of things to check when you're practicing a speech. Is what you're talk, using, is it more of a local expression, or more of a regional, more of a expression that comes from your country alone and not across the world? Is there a way to make it more accessible? Okay, now I'm gonna give you one tip. Oops, no, that's the wrong slide. Not, it's not break time yet. Uh, you can just take, take uh, Rebecca off. Or, no, no, don't take Rebecca off. Let me just give you a tip. It's about word count. It took me several years in, in Toastmasters to finally hear this tip from someone. And that is that for every minute you have of your speech, you should plan about 100 words, no more. A seven-minute speech should not have more than 700 words in it. And it can be very hard to get it down to 700, even harder to get it below that. Prez Vasilev gave his winning 20, no, 2013, I think, speech. It had 465 or something like that words. Can you imagine? and he delivered it in just shy of, of seven minutes. That means there was a lot of space. And his is a very active speech. It's called Changed by a Tire, I believe. And it has, it has a jack and sound effects and has a lot. So if you haven't seen that one, be sure to go that because it's a, a model of elegance and economy for sure. Now. That's just his style. I'm not saying it needs to be your style, but I am saying begin to be practiced in editing your word count down to make sure that you have no more than 100 words per minute. Okay. Now, next, we're going to be watching the recording of my semifinal speech. And I would just like you to watch for those techniques we just talked about. And I'll be asking you how you saw them used. Uh, before I wa we watch this, I'm going to make tell you, watching myself is difficult for me. I'm saying that because you probably have the same experience, or you may not. Rebecca says it's not hard for her to watch herself. But it is so useful. Sarah was saying how she doesn't like watching herself, but, but watching one's recording, you can see what, what you're doing and what you're not doing. All right. The fat caveat, now going to watch the recording of my semifinal speech. Lindy McLean, permission. Permission, Lindy McLean. Thank you, contest chair. You're welcome. I can fly. I'm 11 years old in our school production of J.M. Barry's classic stage play. I'm having such fun and I feel so alive. Mrs. Christensen, can we do another play? Maybe next year, Lindy. Right now, we need to work on your math. Tomorrow, who can give me permission? Have you put off till tomorrow what you want to do today? All that math gets me into a good college and my grandfather is really proud. Grandpa, 
Is it time for my dream now? Can I study acting? Lindy, why don't you choose something a little more practical? How about languages like your great grandfather? In any language, it still means tomorrow. Who can say yes to my dream? I graduate, get a job, get married, get a mortgage, pay my bills. No permission for dreams, none. That sad little voice in the back of my head chants, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. My life is perfectly practical. So practical, I end up as a house cleaner, polishing other people's lives. And that is when the crying starts. One day at work, vacuum cleaner in one hand, half-eaten baked potato in the other. I cannot stop crying. You can almost hear that vacuum cleaner over my wails. Tomorrow will never come. Something has got to change. I sign up for a local acting class and start to feel alive again. The old dream of making it by profession comes roaring back. I am almost 40. It's probably too late to be a professional actor, but I'm going to do it. Graduate school, here I come. I apply and apply and apply, audition, 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 pray and pray and pray. The notification letters arrive and they say, many talented applicants, few positions available. You are not one of them. My heart hears, you're not good enough. You're too old. In the face of the world's suffering, a lost dream is so small. And yet, no matter the cause, a broken heart is still broken. I slide into that black hole of disillusion and despair. My friend, Lindy, I am worried about you. Go see this Reiki master. You'll feel better. New age nonsense. Reiki schmeiki. I go anyway. Laying on my back on the massage table, I think, what a waste of time. My head is cradled in the practitioner's hands, and I cannot explain why, but something happens. It feels like liquid love is pouring over me. My story comes rushing out. The practitioner listens in careful, confidential silence. Exhausted, I'm almost asleep when I hear her say eight wise words. The only permission you need is your own. The only permission I need is my own? Marita. Responsibility. It's too much to take in. I retreat to my black hole where I spend many hours escaping by reading. I've always loved stories, even if I can't act them. One day, the book I'm reading is not all that well written, and I think, I could do this. It can't be that hard to write a book. Ha <laughs> ha. I begin writing. No tomorrow this time. It's not acting. But as author, I get to play every part. In pursuit of a new dream to become a published author, I give myself permission and I join a writer's association where I learn about plot, pacing, stakes, character, conflict, dialogue. In pursuit, I send out query letters and collect rejection letters. Ah! 
I'd quit, but I'm having such fun and I feel so alive. I'm not going to wait for permission. I'm going to self-publish. I hire an artisan publisher, send her my manuscript. We meet. You wouldn't want to publish this, would you? It's terrible, right? Am I still asking for permission? It's good. There are some things we can fix, but it is good. Oh. What dream of yours still waits for tomorrow? The only permission you need is your own. And if I can give it, oh, so can you. And when you do, it might lead to a book. Whatever your dream is, don't wait for tomorrow. The only permission you need is your own. Okay, so now let's have you, let's go back to that content slide and ask. First, first, can we give Lindy a big hand? Yes, so comments in the chat. Fantastic, wonderful, powerful. Wow, superb and powerful speech. Yes, yes, yes. Wow, you are fantastic, super, millions of exclamation points, love it. Thank you so much, everybody, for your lovely yeah. comments to Lindy. Thank you all for that. And let me say that I was really pleased with my delivery. And I was shocked not to go to finals. This is between you and me. And then I was really upset for a period of time, which, which is, you know, human, right? Okay. And it was probably a month later that I finally got this recording from from TI and I watched it not having thought, you know, having purposely not thought about, about it for some time. And I watched it and I, I was blown out of the water. Okay. I, I, in this way, I was so pleased that I had met my own goals, which are all about taking people on an emotional journey. And so I felt like I had had that win, even though I didn't win on the semifinals. I encourage you to have your own set of what makes what you're after so that you have a way of hanging on to your excellence, no matter what judges say or don't say about what you're doing. Okay. All right. And Lindy, now, before you move on, you're at 30 minutes for this section. Yes. Thank you. Is this right? Gonna go blow by blow. It is right. Excuse me. I'm okay. just pausing. We're not going to go blow by blow, but would you just, uh, let's see, put an example in the chat of something you saw that's on this slide, something you saw that worked for you. And if one of you wants to raise your hand and say something aloud, that's another possible. We're not going to rehash the whole thing, but I want you to be able to identify so that you can translate it to your own work. What did you see that's possible that you would like to try on? Maybe that's a better question. Vivid storytelling. Let's see. Only one or two people advance from, oh, okay. That's a note. Okay. Let's see. Uh, wow. Just so many. Use of foundational phrase, opening and closing, present tense, even through childhood, strong, strong close. Uh, the nine-year-old present tense, present tense. Um, let's see, creative use of emotions, facial expressions, gestures, impressive. Let's see what else down here. Great characterization and dialogue. Yes, lots of dialogue. The only permission you need is your own. I heard it several times so I can remember it. Characterization and dialogue. That's great. So that's... Good. Good. So you, you. the point is not whether I was... <laughs> I was doing things, but the point is for you to be able to notice, oh, that's something that works. That's something I can do. That's what I want. Let's move to the next slide. So in okay. 
Now this, although there's only four bullet points, there's a lot to delivery, right? So pick one moment that worked for you and uh, put it in the chat or raise your hand and tell us what you saw that is a kind of delivery magic that you'd like to implement. Throwing of the rejection letters, vocal variety, body language. Yes, lots of body language. In fact, I had to watch it without any audio because of my the way my system is set up. So it was actually a learning experience just watching Lindy's expressions and body language, which is a good thing for us too. It's a great technique for yourself. Um, deliberateness of gestures, masterful use of pauses, vocal variety, body language, use of stage in Zoom, pauses and emphasis, uh, strategic use of props, connecting through uh, returning to Peter Pan, the twirl, yes, body language, still fo feel so restricted in that area, and facial expressions, amazing facial expressions, Lindy. Thank you. My stage is, let's see, from one, from one edge to the other, let's see, there's probably three feet. And forward and back is about the same, three feet, maybe, maybe three and a half. But you see, when you, set, when you get your setup right, when you get the, the, the computer up high enough, not just eye level, but probably four inches, have the camera probably four inches above your eyes, and then tip the screen down. What that does is it means when you back up, you don't end up with as much wasted space above your head. Then you're able to see more of your body and still walk up and get a close up. So use your stage because it gives you more, more tools. Okay. Great, let's move on to the language. There's not much to say about language, really, uh, unless there's something that you want to say about language. <laughs> that, that understand really, I mean, every word. How about okay. that? You, your articulation was crystal clear. We could, I could understand every word. And here's one from Karina, pace. Yes, the variety in your pacing. Great, great. With language, often we notice when there's a problem more than we notice when things are working. So that's the way our brains work and that's okay. And then the exciting, energetic, along with pace is what Ellen uh, put in. Thank you. Okay, let's take Rebecca down for just a minute now, for a few minutes. And I just wanna talk to you, talk, sit down across from you and talk to you about my, my process and what it's like for me. Now, Different people have different processes. So I'm talking about mine, not anybody else's. It's definitely an iterative process, iter iterative process. We already talked about the courage to start with a crap speech. And then each time that you do it, you get to build on that. Now, I am always telling people to do this with, con with, I mean, you can do your whole level one in pathways with the same speech. And you will grow so much faster as a speaker if you repeat your material than if you bring a new speech every time. So please do it. <laughs> Don't just listen to me and say, oh yeah, good idea. <laughs> All right. Different brains work differently and have different processes. I'm in the club with Kyle Hall, who won third in 2003, 2003 I think. When I started on this journey, he sat me down and said, and told, shared his process. I think of what I have to share with the world, and I think of the stories that bring it to life. Well, his it was so clear and easy sounding from the way that he described it. Well, that is not the way my brain works at all, unfortunately. When I go into creating a speech, I dive into the thickest emotional place that I can find so that there'll be plenty of meat and I don't know what it's about usually until at least a few times. This the business of knowing the story but not knowing the message can happen. That's that's common. And you might be the other way around. You know the message, but the story isn't quite bringing it to life. There's maybe another story that will work better. One or both can change. That's that's why you want to give yourself plenty of time so that you can get it wrong as many times as you need and still have a chance to develop it further. Again, I, I said this before, but being human, we can't see ourselves. 
with that same clarity that observers can. That is what's so useful about sharing this highly personal material with other people because they can help to reflect. I really found that moving. I didn't understand this. I, I felt like you were smiling when, when it was a sad part. All these things are really useful feedback and it helps us. But about feedback, there's different ways of managing that and different, okay, it's important to have some sources of trusted high quality sources. I know that one of the common ways that champions like probably Omar here and Kyle visited more clubs than you can count on their calendar and got all that feedback. And Kyle says he just listened for what, what was repeating and kept that and this, the one-offs he just ignored. I'm just not built that way. My skin is too thin. <laughs> And so it works much better for me to have, excuse me, I'm sorry, to have trusted sources so that I know I'm going to go to this club. I know I'm going to give it for this person and using those, that doesn't mean I don't give my speech numbers at times, but I have those trusted sources and that way of, of doing it this year for the first time, I did create this speech with a coach. And that was really a style that worked for me because it had more of a trusted, safe atmosphere. It just worked with the way I'm designed, right? So figure out how you're designed and find a way to work with your design so you aren't you know, making things hard on yourself so that you're making it as fun as it can be as you discover who you are and what you have to say in the world. Okay. Hey, Lindy, can I interrupt you for just one moment? We are running a little bit behind schedule, so I'm wondering if you'd like to skip the break, the five-minute break. Uh, that would be fine with me. And I do know I'm running behind. I'm sorry. My mouth went on and on. Does anybody need a break? We could give you a two minute break to go have, take a bio break. Or Thumbs up if skip you the Q&A or shorten the Q&A. Definitely, definitely quit. I'm going to skip that. Yeah. Break. So, okay. Does anybody need a break? We Put take one a in the chat if you need a break. Thank you, sir, Rebecca. <laughs> No one I need a break. <laughs> I don't see any ones. I don't see any breaks are important. <laughs> and there is a one. All right. Let's okay. take, how about a three minute break? We do that. Yeah. Three, that three minutes. Nice. Okay. Three minutes. And do you want to do that now, Lindy? Right yes, now? Right now. All right. It wasn't hundreds of times the way some people do it. I have actually had the experience for myself. Again, not, not speaking universally of going to many clubs, getting feedback, starting to feel discouraged. And as I apply it, the speech can sometimes actually start to get worse. At some point, there is a point where once you've you know brought it from crap up, up to here, that if you are not uh, strategic about what feedback you apply, it can, can start to go down. And that, of course, feels terrible and makes you not want to do it anymore. So uh just sharing yes that's great okay we do have one question in the chat and perhaps um in the spirit of keeping things on time we can either answer that now or maybe have a brief q a at the end and hold that to the end let's just hold it to the end because i ran this middle part too, too long so let's go ahead okay welcome back one and all it is now time to resume Mind Your Magnetic Message with the wonderful, fantastic, inspirational Lindy McLean. Thank and you. You can remove my spotlight now, I think, right? Yes. Yes. What we're going to do in this section is all about you. So what I want is a few of you to volunteer to give that three to five minute speech so that we can all watch it. And then I will talk to you about it. And so it's kind of a mini coaching opportunity and it's not going to be painful. It's going to be encouraging, I promise you. So who would like to be up? Looks like 
Uh, Lisa, D. Lisa West has her hand up. Okay. Let's have. I'll be brave. Let's have her spotlight Ooh. move me off the screen, or share the spotlight. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Thanks for spotlighting me and having me on this group. I'll just dive right into my talk. If I only knew what I know now, then I would use my imagination for good. Did you know that most people use the power of their imagination to terrorize themselves? Most of my life, I lived in fear and doubt. I used to work on boats and I couldn't swim. So almost every day, first of all, I thought, I hope I don't smash into the dock. And two, I hope the boat doesn't flip over and I have to learn how to swim because I'll die. I'm also a retired realtor. And for 35 years, I terrorized myself thinking, I'm never going to sell another house. How am I going to make it? Now, I use my imagination when I remember to focus on my dream or what I would love. I now live in a beautiful town with a lovely climate. I'm a successful life coach and an artist and a crone. And when I find myself worrying and fearing what might happen in the future, I turn my thoughts to what I would love. So if I only knew then what I know now, I would know that I can create a life I love with my imagination. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for your courage and for your wonderful story. Would you just add me? There we go. Do you, do you go by D. Lisa then? or? Yes, I made it up. Okay, perfect. I just want to make sure I'm doing <laughs> it the way you want it. Okay. Thank you. D. Lisa, thank you for your generosity. I especially like that did you know question at the beginning that people use their imagination for to terrorize themselves. I was like, that really struck me. And I thought, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. You... Had, you know, I, t I spoke about the shape of a good contest speech and, well, excuse me, I'm not coming back up. So you have, have this, you brought to life vividly the, what the circumstance of what was going on and, and how you, you uh, experience the way you walk, you are. I think that is a next step is to bring us vividly into the moment. Maybe, you know, there probably are more than one, but pick one vivid, awful night when you couldn't sleep and you, uh, you you're, you know, give us the, the details. My, my eyes felt like sandpaper, but they couldn't stop staring at the ceiling. My stomach was acidy and tense. I, Give us those physical things that bring us into the emotion and really give yourself. a. And those things are not just for the audience. Those details are so helpful as a speaker for reliving it. Because when you're speaking them, that takes you back to that feeling. Because the more specific and the more personal, uh, the more that's going to help you to dive into that moment so that you're really feeling it. Um the worst possible nightmare, the worst moment when when you were sure that you could be nothing but a failure or these are my, my words and not yours. So um, that will give us, give you a place to climb because one of the things you did beautifully was provide the example of how your life has changed since then. Uh, and, and it was really clear, clear illustration of what's possible. And I loved that. That was really great. Um, the one of one trick to add is is one of the things about contest speech is that uh, the the guiding wisdom should come from someone other than yourself. And that okay. sounds uh, artificial because it's not always true. And I will say that for me with contest speeches, 
the inviolable thing is emotional truth. But timelines, who said what, all that is up for creativity in, in my, for me. Now, it's not the same for everyone. So you can have your best friend say, Delisa, have you ever thought how you could use your imagination for good? Uh, and you want that that's a place where the you want to actually get the foundational phrase um, really clear. And I think that it's you can use your imagination for good. Or beautiful. You know, yes. You can finesse it. You, you can finesse it because I I'm not saying there's one right way, but keep keep trying small variations until it's really landing. Why should guiding wisdom come up from someone else? Uh, we won't go long into it, but the the reason is is that um, when it comes from inside of you, it, you can not come inside of you, but it's it's better like to make it as a, a a fairy godmother voice. I don't know a voice that you heard inside you. Why? Because otherwise it can can sound sound uh, like you are kind of better than everyone else oh, I, yeah. I was able to figure this out and of course that's not the intent but it, it's interesting when you hear speeches that are created that way it, it can be easy to misinterpret that or feel like well I can't really relate because they're too you know you put yourself on a different level than the audience's struggle sometimes so thank you for your feedback I appreciate absolutely. it absolutely that was wonderful Rebecca, I need to go off camera for just one moment. I'll be right back. Can you get another volunteer lined up? Yes, we have three more volunteers lined up. And in this is the order that they will present their first run speech today. Their, I'm not going to call it crap. It's beautiful. <laughs> in whatever form it comes, it's beautiful. Norman, Asha, and then Linda. So those are our four. We have D-Lisa, who already went, Norman, Asha, and then Linda. Thank you. Okay, Norman, you're up. Thank you. Let me get my speech here. <clears throat> so if I only knew what I know now, I would have not declined to take up the survivor's benefits plan when I was nearing my retirement from the U.S. Navy. But sitting through this transition class or workshop, discussing the uh, discussing the survivor's benefits plan, the speaker convinced me and the audience to decline signing up for our spouses for the SBP, survivor's benefits plan. My wife and I, wow, we were kind of shocked at the speaker's conviction. My wife and I decided to discuss this in the evening and we dwelt on it for a few weeks. We looked at or analyzed the pros and cons of the speaker's persuasive presentation we wondered why they were so convinced to do to help us decline this option. So we looked around and ultimately we decided to sign a form declining the survivor's benefits plan. Discovering the demise, we knew we made the wrong decision. If I knew then what I know now, there is no way I would have declined the survivor's benefit plan option. Thank you, Norman. Thank you for your generosity. Okay, there was something, a couple things I wasn't clear about. So who's in the military, you or? Me. You are in the military. And did someone die? No, no, nobody died. Uh, we were, I was going through a transition class that uh, President Obama made mandatory for all military active folks that were nearing the retirement to go through so they can relate to the civilian sector. Okay. And your regret is because? Because our uh, this one presenter talked about the options of the survivor's benefit plan and that we should decline it because of it would cost us more in our retirement than it would to keep it as a, our, for our spouses. But and you wish you had it because? Because now when I look at the options that were available at the time, I could have had a plan for my spouse. 
if I, if I should die. Got it. Thank you. That's, that's clear now. Okay. okay. Sorry. No, don't be sorry, please. This is part, this is part of the process. And this is what's great is you have, a, a, I would, I would guess, I don't know. I'm making generalizations, a, a logical mind. This speech at least is talk is, is full of kind of logical explanations as we go. And it doesn't yet have the emotional journey. Right. And what helps to get to the emotional journey is to get to the crux of what the issue is. That also helps with defining your opening. There are two ways that are my favorite ways of opening speeches. One is with a question, a targeted question, because you, what you want is for your audience to know right away what the speech is about. Not just what it's about, but what issue is it that has to do with them? I mean, why am I going to listen to the speech? What does it have to do with me? Uh, If only I knew then what I know now, selfish can be selfless. That's a possible foundational phrase because the reason it sounds like, if I'm understanding right, that you regret it is because you want, you wish you had that potential generosity and that's a selfless gesture. But you were reluctant to do it because it was selfish or because it was going to cost more, or I might not have this all quite right, but what you want to do is distill it down to the emotional reasons why. And then as you tell the story, rather than being too tied up in the details of, of the plan and the whys and the whys not, you have to give us a little so we, we get the scene. Um, and things that can help bring it to life are things like, were you in a room with a lot of people? And if so, what 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 were the sounds? What was was it was there the smell of stale smell of stale coffee? Was there you know uh, the rustling of papers? These are things that help us to 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 get there. And and you're you're maybe uh, I've been listening to this for twenty minutes and I'm tired and bored, but it, I'm convinced. I shouldn't accept this. Then we want to have the moment where it dives down. So later, yes, paint a picture where you, we get to that point of regret really vividly because all of us have points of regret in our life. And the point of your, of these speeches is to touch other people's experience so that they can profit from that wisdom that you have now. So that moment of regret, which maybe is sitting watching your wife and realizing how much you love her and how much you want to make sure she's okay forever. Maybe it's a, a moment in the middle of the night when you, when you're, you know, doing the night regrets thing. I don't know what that moment is, but bring that moment into focus, clear focus for us so that we can feel it. Oh my yeah. gosh, I did the wrong thing because I, I did the wrong thing. If it's an actual contest speech, you then want to climb out of it. And there may is probably a different story in your life where you took that and, and learned that by choosing something that seems selfish, it's actually selfless. Or there is some way that you that you have learned to apply this wisdom. And there's a story that shows that things are different because you have applied it. Kind of like what Delisa did with with the with, with her current circumstance. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Is that helpful? Oh my gosh! Yes. Good. Good. You're on track for a really meaningful speech because uh, clearly this is something that's got a lot of impact for us for you. Just bring us more of what's inside and the 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 pain of regret and the and 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 then yeah. You're, you're blah, blah, blah. You're doing great. That's what I want to say, Norman. Thank you for your generosity. Let's Thank you, Linda. The next person. I appreciate the feedback. Hey, our next speaker is Linda Eastlick. Welcome, Lisa. I mean, Linda, sorry. Good morning. And I'm, I'm going to sit because of my setup here. But if I only knew then what I know now, Fear is a sneaky scoundrel. Find myself once again at 30, year old, 30 years old, 
sitting at my desk at midnight, clutching my head, alternately pacing and wringing my hands. How did I get here? How do I get out of this? If only I'd known then what I know now. Fear is a sneaky scoundrel. That's what I've got at this point. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Linda. Uh, we're going to need a little more so that we can relate. Because right now, this is a good example of you're not quite getting to the universal fear is totally universal, but you're not giving us enough specificity for us to feel that universality. So um, just like, not just like Norman has a particular situation that's very clear. He has to add a little more emotion, but that clarity of situation helps us to get in and, 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 and relate. So are you willing to say a little more right now about what, what was the fear? The, the sentence I missed was, this could be a career killer. How do I get out of this? And, and the situation is just an, an ethical dilemma. Okay, so these are layers that are important layers in the ethical dilemma. And and do I need to add more there? Um, I'm I'm thinking as I go here. Um, so the ethical dilemma part is important because that's a framework piece. So that's that. For instance, I use the the if I only knew then what I know now because it, this works well for this for this exercise. But you probably won't start a contest speech that way. A, a different question: Have you ever been in an ethical dilemma that you had didn't know how to handle? Then we are right, we're focused in, oh, we're talking about ethics, we're talking about dilemma, I get it. You know, so that's that helps us to 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 go into the territory. You may still need to add more. Uh is it about taking an unethical action? Is it about um that we still need to probably know more with without hurting someone's confidentiality, you know, uh, fictionalize enough to keep the parties safe and everything. But uh, we need to know more. Were you considering doing something that was unethical? Were, had, were you, was it something you said? Can you say any more right now? Being directed to do something that for me was unethical. Okay. That's again, another piece that's, uh, help really helpful so it's not just have you ever been in an ethical dilemma or you didn't know what to do have you ever been directed to do something unethical and had to decide what to do now that question people think well of course i wouldn't do something unethical so then what becomes interesting is why you would even consider it how much the work means to you, how you don't want to lose whatever that is. I mean, what are the stakes that you have that make it make it difficult for you to make that decision, that make you even consider doing something outside that might be unethical? Um, all right, now let's back off from that and go to again to what you've got is the wisdom. Fear is a sneaky scoundrel. That is a truth. But I think there's probably one more step that is a positive way to state the action that you are recommending. Or maybe it's just reach for the deeper truth. Fear is a sneaky scoundrel or something. There, there's something about what the action is that will help us to walk away with, oh, I can do that too. Does that make sense to you? Yes, and something that's in presented in a positive light as opposed to taking me down a dark hole. Right, and not that it's it's not that uh, fear is a sneaky scoundrel takes you down a dark 
whole, it's that it is generic. It's very broad. Yes, it's, it certainly is. And what does that have to do with me? And why do I care? I mean, we're not really that, we don't really, get, those words don't go through our heads, but we're human beings and those are kind of, you know, basic things. So you want to think about that. Um, exactly, the, this is a good question to ask yourself. Exactly, what is it that I want my audience to do, be, or think differently after they hear my speech? And that can help define the foundational phrase. You you brought that moment the 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 low moment vividly to knife. So now you you need to add some lead into it so that we get the the what's going on and what the stakes are. Then we'll really understand that drop. And then you need to add in um, what what the deeper truth, what the discovery leads you to to. That's the transformation. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Good. Is that helpful, Linda? It, it is. Yes. Does Thank that you. Feel like you have something specific that you can take forward and work on. I. It, it's. It, I'm yes. Reluctant. So what? What? What's your question? Let's let's bring it out. It, it, it it's the challenge of as, as someone wrote that. Getting into the specificity is just a challenging task for me, and getting the and and knowing how much is too detailed versus how much is not enough detail to so giving me the question of what are the stakes that helps to refine it to say you, you do need more detail here and here is how to find that detail or, or a way to ask yourself to, to get to that detail from what you gave us to start with, I would err on the other side. I would err on the side of too much information and let people say, we don't need to know that. Right now, you aren't giving us enough to, 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 to relate to with our emotions. So um, if you need to make things up so that, it, again, pr protect the innocent, that's fine. But keep the emotional truth of the situation and, and that won't be a problem. At least that's mm -hmm. my experience. Yeah. Right. So, um, it's like getting a new friend. The more you you divulge of yourself. I mean, you, you when you meet a new friend, you you need to be interested in them and ask them. That's been the primary thing, right? But if you don't reveal yourself, it's not going to be your friendship. Right. So so go with the generosity of revealing yourself, and that will help. Don't be afraid to do that part. And that, that includes the thoughts. Sometimes the dialogue is your inner brain. Well, I would do that because blah, blah, blah. I would never do that, blah, blah, blah. You know, you can have the, the two sides in your mind having that conversation. Maybe it's more that than actually having different characters. But again, that can still help cut the speech, streamline the speech. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're very welcome. All right. Wonderful, Linda. Our final speaker this morning is Asha Singh. Welcome to the stage, Asha. Hey, thank you so much, Rebecca. Uh, I'm going to jump to the speech directly. Um, also, I've improvised a bit from the first draft that I wrote. Hang on. Let's see. I need to have Asha's highlight uh, spotlighted, please. Linda's having some difficulty. There we go. Oh, there she goes. Okay. Go ahead, Asha, now. Thanks. Okay. So I was just saying that I did improvise a bit from the first draft that I made, and we had it in the rooms. Uh, so, yeah, here's how this goes off. Uh, have you ever felt that you keep doing and doing and doing, and yet you do not get the desired result? If only I knew then what I know now, that practice with evaluation is all you need to overcome a significant challenge. I am thinking of the day when I was sitting in that dark room, looking at my computer and seeing the results of my competitive exam for MBA. I did not get through. And this was the second time. 
the first time i tried i scored less this time i scored more but i still do not go through i still did not get through because the marks weren't enough and i couldn't understand what to do now both the years i completed my course book i worked on all the examples i solved all the questions that were there and yet here i am with the result that i did not get through i kept thinking to myself am i not good enough am i not smart enough am i not intelligent enough what is it that i am lacking after that second attempt i took a break i wanted to understand if i'm doing the right thing i reached out to someone took the help and i made a plan this time and the only thing that changed here was now every time i would give my mock exams i would sit back and evaluate the answers that i gave i would sit and spend time on knowing what i did good what i did bad that was the only step that changed i practiced a lot last two times but the thing that i added this time was to see if i'm doing it right if i'm doing if i'm focusing on the areas that need focus and this the third time i got through i got through the exam i got into the college of my choice and i realized practice alone does not help i i could keep doing it again and again but if i do not know where i went wrong the areas of my strength the areas of my weakness i wouldn't have been able to overcome this challenge so if i only i knew then what i know now that practice with evaluation is all that i needed to overcome a challenge things would have been much different thank you thank you asha and congratulations by the way thank you yeah well done i uh, i mean on your mba that's marvelous <laughs> yeah okay linda had too few words you have too many not in the the length of the speech but but in um it needs to be okay I really like the clarity that you gave us when you asked if we've ever felt that we've been doing the same thing and getting not and <laughs> we've been doing and doing and not getting the results that we want. That was a really helpful focusing question. I love that the the story that you're bringing to us is so full of personal meaning and full of emotion as emotional depths that are potential you're not quite tapping those yet but we can talk about how to do that a little bit clearer i also love that you have a story of of transformation already there you did it and you succeeded these are really helpful bones hey I get everybody in the audience i'm giving you this question and you can see what you're clever minds can do. So if you are going to take practice with evaluation is all you need to get the result you want. That's too long for, for a foundational phrase and not quite to the bone enough. So what are your ideas about what her found foundational phrase could be that would be really clear and really helpful? So I'm gonna let you work on that and keep talking to Asha. Okay. Uh, I write notes when I'm listening and then I can't read my darn writing. <laughs> okay. You can bring your dark moment to light more. And the way to do that is to bring more specifics to it. I love those questions. Am I not good enough? Smart enough? Intelligent enough? What am I lacking? Those were really poignant and uh, universal. I mean, we can all relate to that. As you bring that moment to life, think about what, what the feeling is in your body. Is it tension? 
Is it uh, that you have absolutely no energy? Is it that you feel crushed into a tiny ball? You know, find a physical way to describe it so that it, because that helps be more relatable. Uh, I would say you have all the elements. Right now you're repeating some of it and not bringing some of it to light enough. We don't need the repetition because you've already said what the circumstance is. So we know that. So from the beginning, asking, have you ever kept, have you ever kept doing the same thing and not get the result that you want? Then take us straight into, it was my second time going for the MBA exam. Or I was opening, actually, it's the moment that you open Okay, before you give the moment when you open the results and you have those terrible feelings, we want to have some sense of what this means to you. I'm, I'm getting my MBA because I'm finally going to go for my dream and be a... So give us what why you care so much about this first. And then give us the moment of the bad news that's the second failure and what's wrong with me. And give us that really visceral feeling. And then... And then we this is where we that more specificity happens. Rebecca, what's what's coming in the brilliance from our viewers? Um, let's start with uh, practice makes perfect. Practice makes permanent. Um, practice with evaluation gets results. Feedback is the key to success. Get a sec second opinion. Practice, evaluate, achieve. Don't give up when someone makes you feel. I think small. Understanding your failure will help you succeed. And then um, Suzanne put in Einstein's definition of insanity, expecting a different result when repeating the same thing over and over. That's actually a really, that's an excellent point. Um, is a definition of insanity, success formula evaluation. Thank you, Rebecca. So, and just going on the Einstein thing, that would be a really great moment of humor after you've asked the initial pre present. Oh, Einstein says, that doing the same thing. Have you ever, you know, you can, you can do it in a way that, that yeah. that's laughter. Okay. And bringing laughter early on in a speech is a really good thing. Mm. Okay. Then as you see those suggestions for foundational phrases, is there one that jumps out at you as kind of saying it well? Oh uh, yeah, I think there was one. Um, um, um. One second. I think something with regarding the feedback, like the feedback is key to success. It's sort of is in line with what I wanted to say. Okay. And what the the thing that makes it different from what you said is that it's fewer words, a little more concise. Mm. So that that may or may not be exactly the words that you want, but you want it to be short enough that people's minds don't have to try to figure out what it means at all yeah when you said practice with evaluation because we're toastmasters first i'm thinking of you know toastmasters and then uh so you see people's mind can get hooked on different things yeah. go in different directions and you want to keep them really focused on what you're talking about so so finding the foundational phrase that is concise and that really speaks to you really you know in, in that darkest moment then who can bring that that suggestion to you? You know, your auntie or somebody who's mm -hmm. walked that road and can tell you that wisdom. And then you you walk the wisdom, and you can you can say. And this time, instead of practicing and practicing and practicing, I actually stopped and looked. Was I focusing on the right things? You know, you can tell the story of how it was different, and then uh, leading to your ultimate success. Yeah. Does that yeah, help? Yeah, it does. You've got all the you've got all the bones, and it's just cleaning it up and deepening some parts. You're you're doing beautifully. Awesome! Thanks so much for the feedback. My pleasure. That's why we are we are almost at time. Could we take a minute now to congratulate all four of our speakers today? D. Lisa Norman. 
Linda and Asha for their amazing contributions, their courage to step forward. And for each of you, there may be some messages in the chat that you will want to save. So click the three dots at the bottom there if you want to save the chat from this meeting. Back to you, Lindy. Absolutely, because I, I, I want to assure each and every one of you who is courageous enough to step up and do that, that there for each one of you, there's at least five or 10 people in the audience who got something from what you did, if not more. So, so you've given a gift and, and, and that's much appreciated. At this point, we're going to take two minutes right here and now to ask you to fill out the feedback form, just two minutes. So Sarah's gonna drop the link to that in the chat. If you just go there and fill it out, we'll give you two minutes. Oh, and, and Lindy, um, before before that too, could every there's a Lindy's Mind Your Magnetic Message handout in the chat as well. So first, download that PDF so that you have it, and once you have that and safe and sound on your computer or device, then please click the evaluation and feedback form, and we will be taking two minutes. We'll give you two minutes to fill that out. Thank you, Rebecca. If you have any trouble getting Lindy's handout, please let us know in the chat. We'll find another way to get it to you. We have about 15 seconds left to finish up your feedback. Okay, and you can, if you haven't finished it yet and submitted it, please finish it after our session. So we make sure to give Lindy all of the praise and thanks and gratitude that she has earned today. Lindy's going to have uh, just take a, a minute now to send you home with an amazing message, but stick around because Sarah and I have a couple of important things to tell you. Lindy? Thank you so much, Rebecca. I want to tell you all that tonight there's something unusual happening, and there's a longer story about how it came to be, but I will not go into that, but tell you that tonight there is a dinner and a chance to be coached by me briefly in Edmonds, Washington. And if you are able to attend the dinner, it's a nice dinner at Scott's Bar and Grill in, in Edmonds. And it is, it's got a price tag to it so that we could make, so we could rent the room and make it happen. But delicious food. Oh, 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 I can't wait for to have my salmon dinner and my, my, um, I forgot already the rest of it, but it's going to be delicious. So if you are within distance, you've enjoyed this morning with me and would like to have a little more time in the room with me and some other wonderful Toastmasters, 
please, it's not too late to sign up. Sarah, if you'd put that sign up link in chat so that people, someone who's like, oh, I didn't realize and can go ahead and sign up and join us. As I say, I'll be able to coach up to 10 people. And what we're going to be doing tonight is I'm just asking you to bring the beginning of a speech that either is was a contest speech or might be a contest speech. And we'll just work on openings tonight. So I hope that you want to be there and that I will get to see you there. All right, okay. now I have a challenge to send you off with. It's pretty obvious. When you get done with this call, go to your free toast host or easy speak, sign up for the next speaking slot available and take this three to five minute speech that you created today and start the iterative process, deliver it, receive feedback, rewrite it, redeliver, and so on and so forth, because you have some gems here today. And I can't wait to be hearing about how all of those, this contest speech season is filled with all of you bringing these personal relevant messages to life. Because this, today's speech can serve as the bones of a magnetic speech that will serve you and everyone around you. It will deepen your community, increase your visibility, and influence and serve as the yellow brick road of self-discovery. So ladies and gentlemen, a toast with no glass, a toast, here's to your magnetic message. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster. And here's a toast to you, the magnificent Lindy McLean. If you have received incredible value from today's session, would you please put a message in the chat for Lindy and unmute at this time and let's all hear those hands coming together. Thank you so much, Lindy. It was absolutely packed with personal, professional value. Yeah, Lindy. Yes, Yay. Lindy. Woo! Incredible, Thank incredible. Thank you. And, and your real gift to Lindy will be your evaluation form because it's in the reading of the writing and the you are giving a gift back to Lindy because uh, she has given us so much this morning. All right, let's, we hope to see some of you this evening at the dinner so that you can experience this coaching in person, which will be powerful. And I'll have to tell you, it'll be Lindy and mine first time meeting face to face. We met each other in 2020 during the pandemic, although I, I knew of Lindy. And when we met, we decided we were sisters from another mister because we have the, the musical theater background and we've done some really fun things together. And this was just another one of those amazing things that I got to do with Lindy and to honor her as I think of her as Queen Lindy, actually. Thank <laughs> and if you want a Mutt and Jeff experience, you have to be there because we don't know how tall each other are, but the truth is I'm 5'9 and, and Rebecca is this petite little thing. So we're going to be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll be surprising. It'll be surprising. All right. Um, Sarah, our amazing Zoom master today. Fabulous, fabulous work. All the spotlighting, gallery view, music, <laughs> no music. Sarah, thank you. <laughs> so much for your contribution to today's successful adventure. You are very welcome. It's a, it's a delight as always. And did you have anything that you wanted to say, Sarah, before I signed? just wanted to say that if you are having issues with the link for the dinner registration to please send us a message so that we can get you invited and send you the details, it may have closed because today is the day uh, for the dinner. So please just send us your your details we no. do have some some spots available we and we'd do. love to have you there yes don't leave before you could send me your or give me your email in the chat just to me directly i will reach out to you immediately after this meeting and get you the details because we do have a few spots and and who wouldn't want free coaching from lindy mclean or even to watch it is powerful. Don't you agree? Just watching the process of being coached and how much you learned from that. Yeah. I love watching speeches come to life. It's, it's, it's every bit as valuable to be in the audience as it is to be up there. Yes. And I'm excited for many of you to step into the competition pool starting in February, but 
start, you're starting today to craft that speech, get on your schedule as soon as you can in your club to give that what I call the first pancake. The first pancake, it's never perfect, but you got to have the first one to create that beautiful stack with syrup and butter. If you like, you know, gluten-free, that's always an option too. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. I, I'm this, this dream of mine has come to life today in the most amazing way. And you made it powerful. You made it meaningful and you made it magnetic. Yes. <laughs>